Hello, my friends. Today I'll be teaching from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. And I've talked uh, with you before about uh, this scripture. It says, If our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we would have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 48, Jesus is telling us that we bear the image of the earth. And we will bear the image of the heavenly. The day will come where we will have a body that is a heavenly body. That is not made of this earth. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 2 it says, In this we groan, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. In the book of John chapter 11 and verse 32 and 33 Jesus is going to the tomb of Lazarus and he sees Mary, the sister of Lazarus, and she is crying. Verse 33, it tells us that Jesus is groaning in the spirit. And it says again, he groans in the spirit. Jesus is not groaning in the spirit because he is worried about Lazarus. Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. In the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 21, 22, and 23, it says the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption and to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Verse 22. For we know the whole creation groan. Church, the word is telling us, Jesus is telling us, the disciples are telling us, that we groan in our spirits every day. Our spirit groans within itself, waiting for the adoption of the change of our bodies. It is waiting for us to become the children of God. It is waiting to put off this corruptible, decaying, rotten and flesh that dies every day. It, the spirit knows the day's going to come that this body's going to die. And the spirit will be without a house. It won't have a home. So it groans. It, the spirit groans, church. It groans waiting for the day that it will put off this old body. And put on that new body. That heavenly body. That body, that tabernacle. That is waiting for us in heaven that God created for us. Praise God. And we see that Jesus is groaning in the spirit when he goes to the tomb of Lazarus. Verse 23 in Romans chapter 8 and verse 23 tells us, We have the first fruits of the spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to witness the redemption of our bodies. Woo! That's the good stuff right there, church. Jesus was groaning in the spirit, waiting for the redemption of the body of Lazarus. Jesus knows who he is. And he was groaning in the spirit, waiting for the redemption of the body of Lazarus. He knew Lazarus was coming up out of that tomb. And that's why Jesus had to call out the name of Lazarus. Because if Jesus just would have said, Come out of that grave! All of the dead would arose because that's the power of Jesus Christ. That's the power of God. The hour came that the dead, and the hour is coming, that the dead will hear the voice of Jesus Christ and will live. That's the power of God, church. And we ourselves, we groan every day. Our spirits doesn't want to be without a house. God created the spirit and the body to be joined together. It was the will of Adam that caused the separation between God and the body. The spirit of God. So we just, our spirits do not die. But our bodies do. And therefore when the body dies, the spirit has to go home to be with God because it does not have a house. And it groans within itself waiting for that day. So you see church, 
That's why you feel that anxiety. Oh, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Because you don't want to be separated. Your spirit doesn't want to be separated from your body. It knows it has an eternal body waiting on it. And it groans in the spirit every day waiting for that day of adoption. And that day will come to where we will put on that new body. And we won't ever be separated from that body again. Praise God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 15 says this. We say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, that are dead. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel Michael. I mean, not we know it's going to be Michael. And the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall raise first. See, that's at the return of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 35 and 1, starting in verse 1 through 10, it says, The redeemed shall walk there. The ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with song and everlasting joy upon their heads, and they shall obtain joy. Revelation 7 and 9, those are those with the white robes that were martyred for the word of God. Revelation 6 chapter 10 and 11. We see that the 144,000 in Revelation 7 and 9 and that multitude that are wearing the white robes that have been slain for the word of God. We see in Revelation 7 and 9, they do have palms in their hands. Leviticus 23 and 40, the, the rejoicing with the palm branches. They are rejoicing in the book of John chapter 12 and verse 13. When they saw Jesus, they rejoiced with the palm branches. And that's why John is seeing the martyred in Revelation standing there in the white robes with the palms in their hands because they are rejoicing because Isaiah said the redeemed shall walk there and the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with song. That's in Revelations chapter 14 verse 1, 2, 3, and 4. The redeemed praise God. In, the, in verse 17 it says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Revelations 14 and 4. They sung a new song. If you want to know what that song is, church, read Revelations chapter 5 and verse 9. And you can learn the song of the redeemed. Whoo, glory! Revelations chapter 5 and verse 9. There's the song. Thou hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. The 144,000 are redeemed. By the blood of Jesus. Everything that is redeemed, church, is redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man's going to the Father but by Jesus. If anyone preaches there is another way, is a liar and the truth is not in him. Jesus is the only way. God established this from the beginning of time. That Jesus, God would put everything in Jesus. Jesus is the finisher of everything. Tinkerbell. And Jesus will return. And he will, the redeemed, whoo, glory. When the redeemed, Jesus is going to return and the dead is going to come up out of the grave. And they're going to be caught up in the air. And those that are alive and remain on the earth. That's right. The beast. The dragon. Those that receive the mark will be on this earth when Jesus returns. And they will see him raise the dead. And those that were that received Jesus, that accepted him as their Lord and Savior in that day, will be redeemed from the earth. Even those that were martyred for the word of God. Those that are alive and remain will be caught up in the air to meet their Lord and Savior in the air. Church, God is merciful. God is merciful. The blood of Christ is just not for us, the church saints. The blood of Christ washes and redeems everyone from the day that Christ died on the cross until the end of time. Whoever, at whatever time and stage of their life, I don't care if you're now. I don't care if you're in the great tribulation. I don't care if you're in the wrath of God. At any of those times that you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then God will accept you into his kingdom. But if they receive the mark of the beast, 
there is no hope for them. Because once you accept the mark and you worship the beast, there is, you're damned automatically. There is no coming back from that one. But we do know that in the great tribulation, there's going to be a multitude of people and nations and tongues and the 144,000 and the two witnesses that will give their lives for the word of God. And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, church, I hope you were blessed by this revelation, knowledge given by the Holy Spirit of God to His servant. I thank God for everything that He reveals to me. And I am always blessed, and it is my greatest joy to be able to share this gospel with each and every one of you, my dear, precious friends that I love dearly. And I thank God for each and every one of you. I'll see you in the clouds. I'll see you on the other side. Praise God.